Darth Sidious was quite possibly the most powerful, influential, and manipulative figure the galaxy had ever known. Throughout his life, the Dark Lord of the Sith encountered many resilient enemies who stood in the way of his personal hidden agenda. From his own master or his very own apprentices whom he cast aside or who turned on him, to the Grand Master of the Jedi Order during the Clone Wars, all the way to his own granddaughter, Sheev Palpatine had more than his fair share of rivalries throughout his run, which saw him work his way up from a young senator on Naboo to the unchallenged Emperor of the Galactic Empire. But there is one rival in Palpatine Palpatine's long-lasting tenure who sometimes tends to go overlooked due to the character's lack of physical prowess in this galaxy that is largely governed by force wielders and super weapons. The character's name is Padme Amidala, and her ability to frustrate the Supreme Chancellor, usually without her knowing, and to see through the corruption that was plaguing the Senate, presented a great challenge for the Emperor to be in the years before his takeover. From the beginning to the end of the Clone Wars, the Queen of Naboo stands out as the single greatest threat to Palpatine's rise to power. And the first and probably the most important way in which Padme manages this is through her appeal to Anakin Skywalker. Upon discovering the little boy from Tatooine, Palpatine took immediate interest. And as Anakin grew, Palpatine's determination to turn him to the dark side increased as well, particularly as it became apparent to Sidious that Anakin was the chosen one. If he could turn Skywalker to the dark side, that prophecy could be nullified. But the ongoing romance between Anakin and Padme, which only intensifies as Anakin grows older, presents a massive roadblock for Palpatine. Throughout his time as a Jedi, Palpatine orchestrates many events to lure Anakin toward the dark side. He manipulates the boy, warning him to be wary of the Jedi, urging him to seek revenge over his enemies, pushing Anakin's own apprentice away from him, and persuading him to see the potential values of the dark side. But through it all, Padme remains the steady shining star at Anakin's side. Turning the two of them against one another was perhaps Palpatine's most difficult task of all, but it would be a necessary straw to pull if he was to succeed in his rise to power. On the political front, Padme once again stood out as Palpatine's greatest opponent. On one hand, Palpatine is somewhat of a mentor to Padme. They are both senators from Naboo, and for much of the Clone War, they are not really enemies. But as Palpatine begins to gain more and more power, and his authority and influence over the galaxy expands, Padme sees through the Supreme Chancellor's manipulation. She doesn't know what he's up to exactly, but she doesn't like it. From the very beginning of her run as senator, Padme opposes Palpatine's wishes for increased military enforcement around the galaxy. And unlike many senators and political leaders, Padme cannot be bought. She possesses a great deal of clarity with regard to her morals and ideals. When the Clone Wars begin, Padme's outspokenness only grows. She becomes more and more confident in her ability to navigate the political playing field. And it becomes increasingly clear to her that the Chancellor is succeeding in his quest for more power. As the Clone Wars near their end, Padme goes as far as asking Anakin to try to talk Palpatine down, and she even suggests that the Jedi intervene with his continuing ascension. Padme becomes such a hindrance for Palpatine, in fact, that he tries to have her assassinated multiple times. These attempts, however, die down very quickly when Palpatine finds out that Anakin and Padme are married. Killing Padme at that point, and risking Anakin finding out that Sidious was the one behind it, would have been a devastating blow, as he would never be able to get Anakin to join him at that point. Most other competitors who opposed his leadership to the degree that Padme had, would have been dealt with, but Padme had evaded his earlier assassination attempts, and her relationship with Anakin made the Queen of Naboo essentially untouchable. Padme had unknowingly outplayed Palpatine, and there was quite literally nothing he could do about it. She had done such a good job of this, in fact, that if it weren't for Anakin's betrayal, Sidious would likely have lost the entire war. Had Anakin remained at the Jedi Temple, or better yet, had the Jedi Council listened to Padme, Palpatine would have fallen. And through this sequence of events, we see once again just how important Anakin Skywalker's fall was for Palpatine's plan. Not only for the elimination of the Jedi via Order 66, not only because Anakin himself was no longer standing in Palpatine's way, but the combination of those factors with Anakin's personal elimination of Padme on Mustafar. 
Sidious's plan was extremely well thought out, but Padme's presence and her influence right in the thick of his scheme made everything far more delicate than it was intended to be. Palpatine always wanted Anakin to be his apprentice when the time came, but because of Padme, his entire plan hinged on Anakin's fall even more than it would have without her because the alliance between Anakin and Padme was a giant red flag. As long as Anakin stood with her, Palpatine could not rise. And this forced Palpatine to get dangerously risky with Anakin. He flat out reveals himself to be the Sith Lord in what was, from a certain point of view, really an act of desperation from Sidious. The time to end the war had come and he had to turn Anakin to the dark side. And in what would turn out to be another genius maneuver by Sidious, he would use Anakin's fear of losing Padme as the driving force to turn them against one another. For Anakin's turn, which entailed a colossal betrayal of the Jedi Order and of the Republic, and a complete freefall into flat-out possession by the dark side, shifted the dynamics of their relationship. Anakin no longer had any interest in standing on Padme's side of the war, nor would he have even had that option if he wanted to at that point. She had to join him now, and because Padme would never do so, Palpatine had won. Anakin only made things easier when he killed Padme on Mustafar. Now his journey toward the dark side was complete, and Palpatine's greatest enemy, for so many reasons, was eliminated. And even so, the legacy of the late queen would come back to haunt Darth Sidious, as her twins, who as far as he knew had never seen the light of day, would one day rise to finish what their mother had started, saving Anakin from himself and defeating the Sith. And it is for these reasons that despite the absence of the unique abilities of all of Palpatine's other rivals, Padme Amidala was among the most formidable and terrifying enemies the Sith Lord would ever know. So who would you guys say is Palpatine's greatest rival? Who posed the greatest threat to his power? Who made things the most difficult for him before or after his rise? In my opinion, I think it depends heavily on the time period and on how you want to approach the question. Padme is certainly in the running, but we can also look at others like Yoda, who could have ended it all if he had defeated Sidious. We can look at Luke, who turned Vader back to the light and who also had the power to challenge Palpatine. We can look at Qui-Gon or Obi-Wan. We can look at Vader himself himself. We can look at Leia, who was similar to her mother and her political influence and also possessed her father's raw potential in the Force. And finally, we could talk about Rey, Palpatine's own granddaughter, along with Ben Solo, as the coming together of the dyad at the end of the story ultimately prevented the return of the Sith. So if you had to pick one, who are you guys going with? Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. I'm ending it here, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a thumbs up to support the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And of course, may the force be with you always.